Welcome back. I'm Christina Whitney, a Handy Quilter Studio Educator. Today we're going to work on part six of the Heartfelt Whole Cloth Quilt. If you're following along with the directions, we are going to be working on page four using the half carat diamond template and making flying geese. So our next step is to go and fill in this section here with some flying geese. So I'm going to start over on the far left and then I'm going to travel up and around within my throat space, then advance the quilt and continue through the rest. So before I even start to quilt on this section, I went ahead and took just a chalk pencil and drew a line kind of in the middle between the wiggle waves and that will help me to keep my flying geese lined up. Okay, to do our flying geese, we're going to use the half carat diamond template. So I drew a line, you know, just that diagonal or the line that went all the way through the quilt and that's just gonna be my starting point. Now with these flying geese, I am not overly concerned with them being the same size, uh, being perfectly lined up. They're just going to be kind of free. And so I'm just going to go ahead and needle down, bringing up that bobbin. Okay, doing a tie off. And then I'm going to use just one of the sides of the diamond just to do the base of my triangle. And again, I'm just going over just however far I want. Now I'm going to use this side of the ruler to do the top part of the triangle. So I'm just going to line that up. and. Let me snip this thread so you can see a little bit better here. Oops. So you can see that's the edge of my stitching. Maybe you can see it. So I want to have the edge of my ruler a quarter of an inch away from that point. So if I went right to the point, then when I actually stitch it out, my stitch line would cross over and it wouldn't line up very well. So I'm going to just adjust it a little bit about a quarter of an inch away and I'm going to stitch coming up and coming down. And when I was talking, I let my machine move a little bit, so point on that's not so great. But nobody's gonna notice in the long run because I'm gonna put some fills in. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna backtrack, coming back up to the point, and then I'm gonna do the base of my next triangle and this one I'm going to angle it a little bit more backtracking a little I'm going to use the top point this time and again lining up a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the base of the triangle stitch up stitch down and I'm going to come back up so there are some other options that you can do here. If you want, you can do each of these flying geese individually. Uh, they don't have to touch. For me, I wanted to do it continually so I'm not breaking the threads all the time so it doesn't take quite as long. And I'm also doing some backtracking. So it, it's up to you how you want your final project to look. But let's go ahead and stitch a couple more of these triangles. And I'm staying within the boundary of my wiggle wave. And I am going to change my settings. I want my needle to end in a down position so that it doesn't move like it did on that first triangle that I did. Okay, so just alternating, changing around which angle of the half carat diamond template I wanna use. Um, you've got three different angles on there. So you can see on this side, I'm a quarter of an inch from my previous stitch to the edge of the ruler. We're going to stitch that out. Matching that point, coming back up, and moving on. So that is the flying geese fill. 
Let's add another top to it. So I'm going to continue stitching and we'll see what it looks like at the end. So I've finished half of the flying geese and I'm getting ready to advance my fabric. But there were a couple things I wanted to point out real quick. Um, make sure again that you have your machine set in a needle down position when you stop. That will help you keep the machine in position as you're rearranging the ruler. So another thing to think about is that on your ruler you've got three angles. You've got one here, one here, which is the same as there, and then a third one over here. And depending on which angle you use, that will change the shape of your triangle and it will change how much space it takes up. So if we zoom in just a little bit, you can see that some of the triangles are kind of small and then others like this one are a little bit larger. So if you're wanting to do fewer flying geese and have it quilt out a little bit faster, then you might want to use that smaller angle. And if you want a whole bunch of really small flying geese, then use the larger angles. So hopefully those tips will help. I'm going to go ahead and quilt out the second half and I'll show you a picture when I'm done. Well, here it is. I hope you had as much fun doing your flying geese as I did. And I look forward to having you join me for part seven.